so we're talking about um, similarity. Similarity. So remember what's going on. Um, we have a uh, linear operator going from one vector space back to itself, right? We have um, a basis, right, B, uh, which we use on both sides. So you use, a base, use the same basis on both sides, right? And you use that basis to get a, uh, a matrix, which we've been sometimes calling A, B, B, or just A, A sub B. Okay, right. And so this matrix is the matrix representation of, of T, um, right? So that is, if you multiply, if you multiply on the left um, by this matrix AB, it does basically the same thing that the, that the linear transformation T does in the V world, okay, right? So uh, our, one, of, one of our good examples was differentiation, right? Um, you have the differentiation operator on the polynomials, or you could have, you know, the, you, you have this matrix down here that acts on Rn in a way that's um, uh, sort of a mirror of what happens in the in the polynomial world. Okay, so you can sort of think of this. I, I know this this helps you a lot, but these are basically like parallel universes. Okay, right? There's this universe up here, right? The V the V world. And then there's this world, the Euclidean world, right? And to everybody in the V world, there corresponds somebody in the, in the uh, Euclidean world, right? And the way that T acts on these guys up here is reflected exactly by left multiplication by this matrix down here, okay? So it's sort of like you've got your, you know, you've got these guys, and then you've got these number guys who are, who, who act in a very, in a act, who act in an identical way, okay? Okay, so right, you've got your representation, um, and uh, what we were looking at last time was what happens if you take, if you have a different basis, um, if you have a different basis, then you get a different matrix representation, right? You get a different matrix representation, so T sub A B B prime, right? You get a different matrix up here, but you know, still this would be you know just a, a different way of representing the behavior <coughs> in Euclidean in the Euclidean world okay and what we were saying is that uh, so the, the the point of last time was that um, these matrices uh, are related right and they're related um, how are they related can anyone Tell me how they related. Does anybody remember how they related? They're equal to each other? No. They're similar to each other. They're similar to each other, right? That's this word similarity. So what does similar mean? It means that they're similar. In other words, um, there exists a matrix where you can multiply, multiply the inverse of it. Yeah, so you can, there's a matrix so that you can conjugate, you can conjugate one and get the other. There's a matrix S such that um, AB is S inverse AB prime S. Right. So, right, one is, uh, this guy is a conjugate of that guy or vice versa, right? We could take S inverse, we could, you know, if these guys are conjugates, then you know, it, it's a two-way relation, okay? Right, and recall what that S is. S is the transition matrix, transition matrix um, from uh, B to B prime, right? Right, it's the matrix that goes from, uh, that takes, the matrix that takes the vector, coordinate vector with respect to B to the coordinate vector with respect to B prime. Okay. So that's where we stopped last time. Okay, 
everybody everybody on board? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. So um, let's let's start up with an exercise. Uh, actually, let's finish up with an exercise. Okay. So um, here it is. Uh, L is the operator. This is, a, this is actually from your text. Um, it's a good ex good 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 example. L is the operator on P three given by um, L of a polynomial is going to be x p prime x plus p double prime x. Okay, so for example, um, if I take L of x squared, if I take L of x squared, what do I get? Well, it says take the derivative, right? So you get 2x, multiply that by x, and then add on the second derivative, right? So I get 2x squared plus 2. Okay. So <coughs> this, is a, this turns out to be a linear operator. Um, and the question we're going to answer is, uh, what is L to the 100 of 3x plus 5 plus 5x squared. OK. So uh, how, would you, how would you do this? How would you do this? Well, one way would be to start working, right? So you'd say, OK, the first time I get, I get x times p prime, and I add on p double prime, right? So I get 3x plus 10x squared plus 10, right? And then I need to do L of that, right? And I need to keep on going. I do it 100 times, right? Who wants to do it that way? Anybody? Anybody want to do it? You can leave the class. <laughs> OK, so, right, so that would be one way. That would be one way to do it. Not, not the best. Okay. Um, the problem. So they they give you sort of sub problems to to, to help you think about this. Um, so I'll give them. I'll let you do them as exercises. Uh, let b be the standard polynomial basis one x x squared. Um, find the matrix representation with respect to b. Okay. Find the matrix representation on both sides with respect to B. Okay. So um, take, take a minute or two. Uh, it should actually take you one minute if you know what you're doing. And see if you can do it. Okay, even if you haven't finished, talk with somebody about how to how to make the matrix representation. Turn to somebody nearby and say, here's how you do it. You actually, I, this should be your old hat too, I hope. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Somebody want to tell me how to how to get the matrix representation? Okay. How do you get the matrix representation? How do you get the matrix representation? Remember, you take your you take your basis, or you take the elements of your basis. Let's call them B1, B2, B3. Right? You map them over through the through L, and then what do you do with them? You take the transform. You, you so you transform them over here, right? So you take each one of these guys in the basis. Where's my basis? You take one of the, each one of these guys. You hit them with the linear transformation, right? And then you, you have to do one more thing. Plus find the coordinate. Find a coordinate vector, right? You take the coordinate vector with respect to the basis. And those guys are your columns, right? Those guys are your columns. Okay, I, that should be that you should be uh, uh, you, that should be easy for you. I hope, right? Right. So you take L of one. L of one is just going to be zero, right? L of x. Well, it's going to be x. Take L of x squared. Uh, that's going to be two. What is that? I'll be ready to do it. It's going to be 2x plus 2. Right? And so when you take this coordinate vectors, well, this one's going to be 0, 0, 0. This one's going to be 0, 1, 0. And this one's going to be uh, 2, 0, 2. Right? OK. So the matrix representation with respect to B and B is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 2. OK. OK. So um, we could answer this question uh, in a different way. Now, yes, Avery? Is, is the top right corner supposed to be 2, or is it? Oh, wait, wait. I was confused. It's transparent. I was reading across, okay. and I thought it was supposed to be zero all the way across. So okay. I thought it was transpose. Okay. okay. Uh, what do you mean transpose? What's transpose? These guys are the columns: zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, two, zero, two, zero. I, two, I just because when I write it out on here, I like to do it the the row way and oh. then transpose. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, Probably better not to. I yeah. was just confused. Okay. Okay. So coming back here to our original question. Uh, we could answer this question by shifting it over to the to the you know Euclidean universe, right? So instead of saying um, taking your three plus three x plus five plus five x squared and hitting it with L one hundred, right? What we could do is map it down to its coordinate vector, right? Five three five, and then multiply by this matrix a hundred times. Right. Get get the corresponding get the corresponding matrix here. Get the corresponding vector here, and then map it up to map it up to whatever its its poly, the corresponding polynomial is. Right. So that would also that would be one way to do it. Awesome. New eraser. Okay. So um, however. It's actually better to change the basis. So um, we're going to take a new basis. Let b prime. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Let let b prime be the basis one x one plus x squared. Okay. Um, just for exercise, um, let me ask you to. Find the transition matrix. 
from B to B prime, right? We are calling this S sub B, B prime, right? going from one basis to the next. I'm sorry, I went from B prime to B, sorry, B prime B. Turn to somebody nearby, turn to your friend, and talk with them. Tell them what the matrix is. Lizzie, you have no friends. <laughs> Not today. Talk with Russ. He's, he's good. Talk with Russ. Yeah, so I was just got confused and so slow. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're going to Okay. Oh, we're trying to be Okay. So, somebody tell me how you do it. How do you find the transition matrix? <coughs> Maybe I shouldn't go so slow. Um, remember how to get the transition matrix. You take the take the elements of your basis and express them in the in terms of the elements of your second basis, right? So we have one x one plus x squared. We express them in terms of one x x squared, right? Well, this is just one of one, this is of course one x, and this is one one and one x squared. Right? So you do that, right? And then your transition matrix you use these coefficients uh, as the columns of your uh, as the columns of your transition matrix. Right? Yeah, read. I think we said it was going from B prime to B, so shouldn't we have a negative one? Going from B prime to B, why, why is there a negative one? This is one x, one plus x squared. squared. So if you're going to B, don't you need to get rid of the one? Done. So you, you express each of the elements in terms okay. of the other basis, right? So this is one one, you know, plus zero x, so plus yeah. zero okay. x squared. We got confused. Okay. So this is going from B prime to B, right? And if we wanted to calculate, so going on, if we wanted to calculate what um, A B prime B prime is, we could do it using the transition matrix. We'd say, okay, I'm going to take, it's going to be S B prime B, uh, A B B, uh, S B prime B inverse. You could calculate it that way, or more easily, um, uh, could calculate directly. You could calculate it directly, right? Um, L of 1x and 1 plus x squared. Um, turned out to be uh, uh, 0, 
x and 2 1 plus x squared. Okay. Which, if we take the coordinate vectors with respect to b prime, If we take the coordinate vectors of these guys with respect to b prime, well, it's just going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and what's the last one? The coordinate vector of this thing with respect to the b prime, b prime basis? Nope. With respect to the b prime basis. Oh. Not the b basis. 0, 0, 2. 0, 0, 2. Thank you. Zero, zero, two. Okay. So you see that the, however you get it, the basis is, I'm sorry, the matrix is going to look like zero, 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 one, zero, 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 two. Okay. And you see that it'd actually be better to use this to answer our question, right? What is L100 of, of 3x plus 5 plus 5x squared? Well, let's map it down using the b prime basis. We get here there would be 305, no, I'm sorry, 035, 035, and then you multiply it by this matrix to the hundredth power, right? Well, what's this matrix to the hundredth power? It's diagonal. When you do it to the hundredth power, well, just the diagonals entries get multiplied that many times. Okay. So this is great, right? And so you end up with, well, it's just going to be, uh, right, 0, 3, 2 to the 100 times 5. OK. Which corresponds, if we map it back up to its, the place where it should be, um, which corresponds to 0 times 1 plus 3x plus 2 to the 100 times 5 of 1 plus x squared. Okay, so this is your answer. Any questions on the, about that? IPC, why, you know, sometimes it's, it's a good idea to change basis, right? If you change to a good basis, then things become simpler, right? But what does good mean, right? Changing to a good basis uh, simplifies matters. But what's good? What's good about what's good about this basis here? What's good about this basis? Can anyone see what's what was the nice property about this basis that really helped us? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if this is right, but if you apply the um, operator, operator yeah. then all of the elements become like single multiples of elements, so you get a diagonal matrix. Exactly, exactly. Great. I give you three points on the next example. Thank you. Yeah. So exactly. So what's good about it is that they become multiples of themselves, actually. Right. So you've got um, L of x becomes x, 
right? L of 1 plus x squared because 2 of 2 1 plus x squared, right? And because of that, the representation is going to be diagonal, right? Right, so what's good? What, what is good? What, what is good? Um, uh, basis is good. Is good if L of each element is some multiple of each element, right? For then the matrix representation A B B is diagonal. Now this quality is what we call, say, B, the B sub i are eigenvectors. Eigenvectors. And I shouldn't use this double notation. I should use like this. OK, these guys are are eigenvectors. And that's, so um, if you can find an eigenvector basis, then your representation will be diagonal. OK. This is sort of jumping ahead, but, but we will we'll use this uh, in a chapter or two. OK. okay. So that is the end of uh, the similarity section, the end of the matrix representations uh, for now, although we'll come back to it actually in chapter six. So we've just finished chapter four. Okay. Any questions? Questions? Okay, so let's go on to chapter five. Um, chapter five is, in some sense, is a digression. If I were writing this book, I would. No, actually, I would do it the same way. <laughs> because we actually need something from chapter five to get to do chapter six. Yeah. yeah. Are we? Is there an easy way to find a good basis for uh, operator? Yeah. Yeah. So your question is, how do you find? How do you find eigenvectors? How do you find eigenvectors? Right. You've got this. Um, Good, good question, right? And we'll answer it very thoroughly later on. Um, you've got this matrix representation, right? Right? You've got this matrix representation, and you're saying, well, I want to find some, how do I find the polynomials that when I hit it with this guy, then they, they only get multiplied by some scalar, right? Um, so corresponding down here, your question is, how do I find a vector so that a v is um, a v is uh, some multiple of v, right? Um, uh, so that's the same thing as asking, how do I find a vector that satisfies this sort of thing, right? The same. So I'm just rewriting. Okay. Um, uh, right, and you want some non-zero vector that that's right. You want some non-zero. You want some non-zero guy here. Okay, so what's your question? How do I find? I want to find alpha so that this thing is zero. Well, no, or, no. Or so that this thing has a non-zero solution. Oh yeah. In other words, this thing is invertible. Non-invertible, non non-invertible, yeah. right? So it's, it's the question is for what alpha, for what alpha is this thing non-invertible, right? So the question is, you know, for what alpha is the determinant of this thing uh, zero, right? And you, if you answer that question, then you can you can you can go back. Yeah, Russ. Quick question. Yeah. So can we like find the eigenvector first and then go back to find the basis? Yes. 
That's how we have to do it, right? Because otherwise, you know, uh, where, where did we get the B prime basis, right? You know, the B basis, you said it like everybody will think of that B basis. But how do we get that B prime basis, right? I mean, maybe in this case, we sort of mess around a little and you find it. But, but really, the way you find that, that good basis is by this, by some process like this. So, I mean, like, can we set up, can we set up, can we set up adding, adding vector, for example, like uh, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, and then use this adding vector to find the basis? Yes, yes, yes. Right. So you, the way that you would do it is find the, the, the guys in the Euclidean world, and then you would translate back. So what would happen is you 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 do you do some work over here and you find oh yeah zero 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 uh, zero one zero and one zero one are all eigenvectors, okay. And then you say well what do they correspond to? Well they correspond to zero x and one plus x squared. Yeah. So that's how you get them. Um, but we'll we'll do this in we'll do this again in you know s slower uh, in t two chapters after the next. Yeah, so I, I mean, we, in some sense, it would make sense to jump right into chapter six right now, because this is what we do in 6.1 or two. Um, but we're going to take a bit of a digression. Um, okay. So um, uh, the digression is to chapter five, which is something called inner product spaces. Oops. Inner product spaces. Okay, um, and inner product is just a generalization of the notion of dot product. So, um, generalization of dot product. Okay. So, um, Right, so what's the dot product? Who can tell me what the dot product is? Anything? Um, for vectors like this, sum, uh, the multiplying each of the components. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you are in, um, uh, you've got, uh, let me, let's make a like this maybe. Um, you have x and y in Rn, right? So let's say that x is, um, uh, x1, x2, maybe xn, y is y1, y2, yn. Then we define the dot product, usually writing with a dot. Uh, the dot product is going to be the sum of the products of the corresponding components. You take x1 times y1 plus x2 plus y2, uh, x2, I'm sorry x1, y1, plus x2, y2, plus blah, blah, blah. You add up all these things. OK. Um, close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes for a second. Who has anybody not seen the dot product? OK, great. Okay. Any, uh, keep your eyes shut for a, one, one more second. Um, uh, no, forget. <laughs> Sorry, open your eyes. OK, right, so this is the dot product. Um, uh, also called the scalar dot or scalar product. Right? It's called the scalar product because you multiply two vectors and you get a scalar. Right? You get a number. Right? You get a number, a scalar. Okay. Um, and for us, uh, the dot product, um, we could also write it as um, x transpose y. Right, x transpose y, right, the product of these two matrices. Right. Um, of course, that's a one by that's a one by one matrix, but we don't we we're going to continue conflating one by one matrices with numbers. Okay, so one by one one by one matrix, basically a number. Okay, so um, <coughs> okay, so. Uh, Remember what the magnitude of a vector is, right? The magnitude, magnitude of a vector 
um, is defined as, well, x1 squared plus xm squared to the 1 half, right? You take the sum of the squares of the components, everything to the 1 half power, um, right? It's just an extension of what you do in, in you know, two or three dimensions. And that's the same thing as taking the dot product of the vector against itself and then taking the one half power. Because right? this thing here is the dot product of the vector against itself. Right? Okay. Right? This is the, the length of the, the length of the vector. Right? Or you can think of it as the distance of the endpoint to the origin. Right? You've got, you've got some point. Right? You've got this vector here. It's, this, it's the distance of this endpoint to the origin. In other words, the length of the vector. Um, uh, if you're thinking of these points, um, so you have this guy and this guy, um, then the distance between the endpoints um, is going to be, so the distance between these two endpoints is the magnitude of the magnitude of the difference. Right. That's the same thing when you uh, you have this vector, you have you subtract off this vector, right, and you get you get this thing here, right? It is the length. If I look at the magnitude of x minus y, I get the length of, I get the length between, the distance between the endpoints. Right. And of course, you know, you could express that as a dot product if you want it. You know, it's the square root of the dot product of x minus y against its right. So This is the same thing as x minus y, transpose x minus y, uh, everything from that. Right. If you want. There's no point in doing it. <laughs> Why you would do that, I don't know. So you know, I, I, most of this stuff, I think, is just, just review for you. Um, but maybe I'm just going to say things in a slightly different way. Um, no, the next thing is not its definition, but um, the dot product has a geometric interpretation uh, that's kind of useful. It is that um, if, you take, if you take the dot product, it's the same thing as the product of the magnitudes of the vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. So theta, the angle between them. Okay, so right, you've got two vectors. Um, x and y, you've got the angle between them. Turns out that the dot product has a, has a really nice geometric meaning. It's the product of the magnitudes um, times the cosine of the angle between them. So this leads to the observation that um, at least for uh, x and y non-zero vectors, um, x 
is perpendicular to y, uh, if and only if the dot product is one of these guys perpendicular, right? The cosine would be the cosine of the angle would be zero, right? So you can tell if vectors are perpendicular to each other by by taking their dot product. Um, okay. How many of you have seen this this fact before? How many of you have not seen this fact before? Okay, some people. Okay, we can uh, maybe I'll talk about it next time. It's the proof is the proof is uh, proof relies on on the law of cosines. you have one vector and you have another vector, then you have this third thing that makes a triangle, right? And you use the law of cosines, you use the law of cosines, and out pops this, out pops this relation. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, this leads to a definition. Um, uh, if the product, if the dot product is zero, we say that x and y are orthogonal. That's to say perpendicular. Perpendicular. The geometric interpretation gives us something called the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Um, which is this that if you look at the size of the um, if you look at the size of the dot product, then it's smaller than the product of the magnitudes. And for that's for us that's pretty clear because right um, the size of the the absolute value of the dot product um, is going to be the magnitude I'm sorry the absolute value of 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 this right right but that's just the product of the magnitudes times the magnitude of the cosine, right? But the magnitude of the cosine is smaller than equal to one, right? So you know that the side, this thing is gonna be smaller than that. Right? This thing is less than or equal to product of the magnitudes. So you have some control over the, the size of the dot product. So I, I think probably many of you have not seen, not, haven't seen this before, but don't worry, it's not that, it's not that complicated, right? You just see that you have some control over the size of the dot product. And we'll, we'll, we'll need that. And then the last thing um, that I want to re recall uh, is the, the projection. Uh, so the vector projection of one vector onto another. So uh, one vector onto another vector. Okay. And I'm hoping you've seen this before. Uh, you have one vector and you have another vector. Right? And you want to um, you want to find you you project, project perpendicularly down onto it. You, on, you project x perpendicularly down onto y, okay, and you get something like this, okay, and this thing is called the projection of x onto y. Okay, 
um, it turns out if you um, if you think about the again the geometric the ge geometric meaning of the dot product that this is this can be worked out as um, the dot product um, of x against y over the dot product of y against y times times the vector y. So this is a number, and then this is a vector. Right, so it tells you like how much, uh, what multiple. It tells you what multiple of y is this projection. How many of you have seen this before? How many of you, or maybe I should say, how many have not seen this before? The vector projection? Oh, OK. OK. OK, maybe I'll talk a little bit more. I'll say more about it next time when I fix what I was doing. OK, that's it for today.